Hello viewers, you're welcome to this episode of our program, Learn at Home, brought to you by Kampala Parent School and NETV. We are beginning by looking at uh, our uh, work. We are looking at responses you people submitted. One was Bugabo, Buzabo Nisha from Kampala Parents. Your work was very neat. You have really made my day. I'm very grateful for your work. Another one is called Akero. No, sorry. Okero Sulaiman. You passed all numbers. I'm very grateful the way you've done your work. Nakanda Patients from Nakasero Primary. We received your work. Tina Juliet Faith. Hello, teacher. My name is Tina Juliet Faith, and I am a pupil of Mboya Parent School. I enjoy the teaching. Here are the answers. Number one, mountain vegetation. Number two, a vegetation zone is a region with a certain type of vegetation according to average rainfall or temperature. Number three, deforestation reduces Deforestation reduces vegetation in an area leading to low rainfall. Number four, Mediterranean vegetation. And lastly, number five was altitude. Thank you. You already submit your work in time. You were asking about the, you submitted work of the previous activity. And Lily, I request you to be current. You're from Mbuya Parents Primary School. Uh, Ojambo Alex Mako. From Valerian Primary School in Chibuli, we received your work. You passed all numbers, Lily. Yeah, you're doing well. Uh, we have Mokisa Anyanzo. Uh, this is from Guanya Preparatory School. Uh, you submitted your work. We received it. But your work is not current. You submitted the previous work. Always be current for the work we are doing or we are giving at that particular time. Chizito Joseph from Creamland Junior School. Uh, Vikala Munda, Gabi, you passed all numbers and I'm very proud to say for you all the time submitting work and you are following all the work. Uh, this is Chivumbi Addison David from Joy Primary School. You passed all and I'm happy you're also following all the time you're submitting your work. For you, you're going to really get a D1 come PRE because indeed you're making use of this time. Uh, we have Najemba Irare from Joy. Uh, yeah, these children of Joy Primary School, really, for them, they are making use of this opportunity from Kampala Parents and NTV. Uh, we have Kirara Patients from Apollo Kaguana Casero, P5. Yeah, you did well, but you only failed number four. We are going to look at it. We are going to make corrections for it. This is Indagire Praise from St. Stephen Primary School, P6. You submitted your work. We are going to look at it. This is uh, Nsiro Efran from Kireka Hill Infant School, P6. You passed all. Uh, we, did, we also got to work from Awo, Awora Nicholas from Entebbe. You did not indicate the school, but we got your work. However, your answer was not proper. You said they have snow. You said they have snow. Let us look at the question the way it is and we have the clear view of the question. What evidence is there to prove that some modern peaks are above the snow line? For you said they have snow. Now when you say they have snow, it's like your meaning if this is the mountain, an example of a mountain with the snow on its peak like Mountain Renzori, the snow is on the peak. But for you said, they have snow. It's like you're meaning the whole mountain right from the, uh, down here, there is snow, which is not right. So say, uh, they have snow on their peaks. However, there are some other learners who also feel the spelling of the word there. They use this word there on their peaks. We are supposed to use this. This word there means a place where you're referring, but this one here, possession, on there, meaning snow is on their peaks. But here, a place, you're referring to a place. So use the appropriate word there, on there, showing the possession. Many of you, you had a challenge with this, so you look at that. 
Uh, also, we have Emanuela Andu Go from Namuaya Education Center. Still, the problem was the same. They are, they are pigs. Use this in the name of a place. But this one here, they are pigs, meaning the pigs belong to those mountains that cross the snow line. We also got work from Brian Kacho. Uh, this is your answer, which was not proper, but we can look at it and see how best we can help you. Uh, it was number four. Mention any one social importance of mountains, for you gave an economic importance. Let us get to understand these aspects. We have social, political, social, political, and economic. So when we say social, we refer to people's way of life. The uh, importance is that refer to people's way of life for settlement, for food, that is people's way of life, that is social. Political concerning administration. Political concerns administration. That's a political importance. Then economic, where people get money. People get jobs, people get money. So you get to uh, differentiate between political, social, and economic. They have just explained. Now for you, this was the question. Uh, mention anyone's social importance of mountains to people. You said mountains are used for mining, yet mining is economic. So for that point of view, it was uh, the question what is the social importance for you gave an economic importance. Uh, we can also look at Aliyo Sean Prince from Makindye Primary School. You're following all the time and you're all submitting your work all the time. Uh, we also got work from uh, Kambare Asa. You failed number three. Let us look at the question and we look at the way you reasoned it. Mention number three. Mention any one way tourism promotes economic development of countries. Now, for you said, for you said, tourism promotes development in a country. You repeated the question, disguising to be answering it. You repeated the question in a way of answering it. So, you, you try to avoid the words in a question when answering. So, you said, promote uh, development. And the question was also asking for economic development. So, you had to look at things like, People get uh, income, people get jobs. Lastly, Balikudembe, Joseph from Shironile, star, you fail number two. But we shall not go into uh, details of it. But let us look at the correction of our work. So number one. Number one was, state the political importance of mountains to countries. The answer is simple. I've just talked about it. We say mountains, mountains form, mountains form political, or one can say natural boundaries. of countries. That's number one. Number two. Number two. Uh, what evidence is that to prove that some mountain peaks are above the snow line? Shall we say there is snow on their peaks. This is where some people are fairly the spelling of there. You see, there, we are referring to the place. Then, on their peaks, uh, this is a possessive noun. Uh, the snow is on their peaks. So, get to know where to use this there and this there. 
We are coming to number three. Mention any one way tourism promotes economic development of countries. We are saying tourism is a source of income. Tourism is a source of jobs. Tourism is a source of income. Then we are saying tourism is a source of jobs to the people. Then tourism creates market to local goods. Tourism creates market to local goods. I'm explaining now. When we say tourism is a source of income, when tourists come to Uganda, there are people who sell crafts. They get money after selling their crafts. Even tourists, when they are entering, like when they go to the Uganda Museum, they have to pay money before they enter to see the features. Then tourism is a source of jobs. There are people who work as game rangers, game wardens. They are paid money. That's their job. They're acting as game rangers, game wardens. That's how tourism is a source of jobs. Even there are these people who act as tour guides. Those who transport tourists, and that's their job. And in this kind of situation we are in of COVID-19, those are some of the sectors that are greatly affected because we can no longer receive foreign tourists. Then tourism creates a market to local goods. There are people who make a crafts. Uh, tourism creates a market to, no, we can say for, for local goods. And I've just said uh, there are foreign tourists or even local tourists who visit different places. They buy the crafts. Number four, the question is, mention anyone's social importance of mountains to people. And we say the social concerning people's way of life or people's standards of living. So we are saying mountains, mountains are used for settlement. Mountains are used for settlement. And here we can talk about the Bagis who live on slopes of mountain Erigon. The Bakonjo live on slopes of mountain Renzori. Uh, we can also talk about uh, number five. We can come to number five. Here you can add mountain is hope in rain formation. Mountain is, before you come number five, mountain is hope in rain formation. Mountain is hope in rain formation. So number five, which was our last number, name the mountain in Uganda, which is no cap throughout the year. And that's the mountain Renzori, which is found in western Uganda at the border of DRC and Uganda. That was our work. If you got five out of five, you write, you write uh, five out of five and put very good or you can put excellent. If you got four out of five, you also did good work, put good. Then if you got maybe three or less than that, then you can put fair and you keep trying. Try as much as you can to use a good handwriting. Try as much as you can to use a good handwriting. There are some of you who are submitting work, but handwriting is not good. Try to write well. So we're going to begin by reminding ourselves what we looked at in mountain vegetation. Uh, when I come back to you, I know you're all attending these lessons and you attended that lesson of that day. So tell me what we learned about mountain vegetation. Yeah, somebody is saying it grows in areas of low temperature. It's a source of softwood timber. Um, and also looked at areas where we have mountain vegetation. We gave examples of some mountains in Uganda, like around Mountain Erigon, 
mountain Renzori in Tanzania looked at mountain Kilimanjaro. Then we can also talk about uh, the human activities that are done in mountainous areas like we did. We talked about trade, we talked about tourism, crop growing, lumbering. We also looked at reasons why foreign tourists like visiting mountainous areas. We said there is cool climate, there is a good view, or one can see a beautiful scenery. From there, we also looked at importances of mountains. We said we looked at it in categories, politically, socially, and economically. Politically, we said mountains form natural boundaries of countries. Socially, we said the open rain formation. Uh, we also said the use for settlement. There are some people who live in mountain slopes, like the Bagisu in Uganda, uh, the Bakonjo around the mountain, Renzori and the Bamba, Bagisu around the mountain, Erigon, the Chaga around the mountain, Kilimanjaro. So another thing we can talk about, uh, uh, we can remind ourselves of the economic importances of mountains. We also said they attract tourists, there is for mining, and so many more. So today we are going to also begin by looking at the problems that are faced by people who live in mountainous areas. So we can talk about problems problems faced by people who live in mountainous areas. Problems faced by people who live in mountainous what? Areas. And this is P4, P5, work but we can remind ourselves we are going to look at each problem and the solution to it yes uh farouk is saying soil erosion so here we can talk about soil erosion we can begin by defining it soil erosion is the washing away of the top soil by its agents how can the problem of soil erosion be controlled in mountainous areas? There are very many ways the problem of soil erosion can be controlled. One, by terracing, by contour. Let us have these listed down here. It can be controlled by terracing, by contour plowing. by contour plowing by afforestation by afforestation by strip cropping by strip cropping so all these methods we have talked about that help to control erosion they simply uh, slow down the speed of flowing water. So when they ask you a question, how does terracing hope to control soil erosion? By slowing down or by reducing the speed of flowing water. The same applies to contour plowing. We say contours slow down the speed of flowing water. Afforestation, the planted trees slow down the speed of flowing water. The same applies to the crops that are planted uh, in this kind of order. So, even strip cropping controls the speed of flowing water by slowing down, I mean controls erosion by slowing down the speed of flowing water. Then when you look at the causes of soil erosion like deforestation, overgrazing, bush burning, they cause erosion by increasing or by leaving the soil bare and exposing it to the agents of soil erosion. So, have looked at the first problem, which is erosion, and these are the ways we can control soil erosion. B, can talk about poor transport. In mountainous areas, there's a problem of poor transport. How is it caused? The steep slopes make road construction difficult. How can it be controlled? By using winding roads. 
by using or by constructing. That's say by constructing. By constructing winding. By constructing winding roads. Somebody may be asking, what are winding roads? If this is the mountain, I'm giving a feature of a mountain. So they construct roads that move round, that keep on. Roads that keep on winding roads. If that's a, a mountain or a hill, mountains, I mean roads that move round, winding roads. It's a mountain. It keeps on going, bending, coming, coming like this. Eh? These are winding roads. By constructing winding roads, not having, just when you look at the steep slope like this one, you can't have a road coming like this. But at least when you go like this, you come like this, you go like this. That's an example of a winding road. So in mountainous areas, one of the problems we talked about is poor transport, so by constructing winding roads. Another one, by using donkeys for transport. So we have looked at uh, poor transport, you can come to see, and also look at another problem faced by people who live in mountainous areas. You can talk about landslides. Yeah, I see. Sierra was already saying it. Landslides. When you look at a problem of landslides, it can be caused by heavy rainfall and deforestation. When you cut down the trees, the trees hope to control landslides by holding the soil particles firm. The roots of the trees hold soil particles firm. However much a strong or heavy rainfall comes, the, uh, the, 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 the soils on a mountain will be firm because of the what? The trees and their roots. Uh, so we are saying one cause of landslides, heavy rainfall, then deforestation. One way of controlling landslides is by planting the trees. And we said the roots hold soil particles firm. Then one way we can avoid landslides is by vacating the place. Like I've seen the government advising people living in mountainous areas, vacate the place. So we have said the solution is by afforestation. When you plant trees, you're controlling afforestation. You're controlling what? Landslides. Uh, when we go ahead, somebody is saying floods. We cannot have floods in mountainous areas. We cannot have floods in mountainous areas. Because when we talk about floods, we mean water which is in a low land. A lot of water in a low land which is not here moving. So in a mountainous area like this one here, uh, we can only experience the floods, and I mean the landslides and the mud slides, but floods are experienced in a low land area. So don't talk about floods being experienced in mountainous areas. So you can go ahead and talk about the volcanic eruption. Volcanic, volcanic eruption. There is a problem of volcanic eruption in mountainous areas. How can the problem of volcanic eruption be controlled in mountainous areas? There is no way because you see nature, so you have to vacate the place. People who are living in mountain in active volcanoes that can erupt at any time. You simply have to vacate the place. We have three types of volcanic mountains. We have the uh, sleeping or dormant. We have the dead or extinct. Then we have the active volcanoes. Active volcanoes are volcanoes that can erupt at any time, like Mountain Ginangongo in the DRC. Then we have the sleeping or dormant. Those are volcanoes that take long to erupt. Then we have the dead or extinct. These are volcanoes that will never erupt, but they erupted during their formation. So people are living in places with active volcanoes simply vacate the place. There's no way, but just vacate the place. Then we can talk about the last one, which is uh, attacks from uh, dangerous wild animals. From dangerous 
dangerous wild animals. Uh, with attacks from dangerous wild animals, you may not really have uh, so much to do, but simply to inform those of Uganda Wildlife Authority to come and have these animals taken in game parks. Because these animals will attract tourists and in the end, us as Ugandans, we shall benefit from them. So from there, we can talk about another vegetation zone, which is mangrove vegetation. And we have been talking about mangrove vegetation, and I'm sure you know more about it. I told you we are going to be looking at each, each vegetation zone, not until we finish them, and look at another subheading. Here is a sketch map uh, of Africa showing vegetation zones. Sketch map of Africa showing vegetation zones. We looked at it already, but we can keep uh, reminding ourselves about it. Vegetation zones. So when you talk about, uh, uh, we can remind ourselves before we look at where mangrove is, we said Mediterranean is found in the northwest of Africa and the southwest uh, savannah is this one which covers the largest part of Africa. This is equatorial in the Central Africa and some part of uh, West Africa. Desert, this is Sahara Desert, so we have desert vegetation. Those areas neighboring Sahara have semi-desert. Then you also have temperate within this part of South Africa and some desert vegetation also in Namibia because we have Namibia Desert. So when I leave that, to look at where mangrove is, mangrove is found at the coast, at the coast of East Africa, and some part of Madagascar. That's where we have mangrove vegetation. So about mangrove vegetation, we shall talk about it uh, in a, a few way, and we shall really understand it. One, what's the importance of mangrove vegetation? People at the coast uh, use it for making boats or ships. It also attracts tourists. So we can begin by talking about importance of mangrove vegetation. Importance of mangrove. And I told you mangrove is single or oh, there are some books and some people who write mangrove is double O. Oh, that's wrong. It is single O. Oh. So importance of mangrove vegetation. One, we have already looked at that. We are saying uh, mangrove vegetation attracts tourists. Mangrove vegetation. Mangrove vegetation attracts tourists. When you look at some tourist attraction centers that people of Kenya have, one is mangrove, which us in Uganda don't have. Because mangrove only grows along the uh, coast of East Africa and in salty water. So mangrove vegetation is one of the tourist attractions people of Kenya have and us in Uganda don't have. So if I ask you a question, name one tourist attraction in Kenya which is not in Uganda. We talk about mangrove vegetation. So we can also go ahead and say uh, mangrove vegetation Mangrove vegetation has mangrove vegetation has waterproof timber. Waterproof. It has waterproof timber for making boats. One can say ship ships. Mangrove vegetation has waterproof timber for making for making boats. One can say ships. So I've looked at the importance of mangrove. We shall talk about the location so that they can ask you a question. Name one area in East Africa where we have mangrove vegetation. Let me have it in a question form. Name one area. Name one area in East Africa. Name one area in East Africa with 
mangrove with mangrove vegetation now you know most of you now know it name one area in east africa with mangrove vegetation yes ivan yeah ivan is saying along the coast of east africa thank you so much along the coast of is it africa i've been saying along the coast of east africa that's where we have mangrove then they can ask you a question why does mangrove vegetation grow along the coast of east africa and not in the interior of africa so you are saying due to the presence of uh, salty water why we are having it also in a question form why does mangrove vegetation so you can name this maybe question one have this as question two why does why does mangrove why does man, why does mangrove vegetation why does mangrove vegetation grow along why does mangrove vegetation grow along the coast of East Africa. Why does mangrove vegetation grow along the coast of East Africa? So we are saying due to presence, due to presence of salty water. Due to the presence of salty water. The coastal water is salty because uh, the, the seas and oceans have rivers that flow into them, but they don't have those rivers that flow out of them. That's why the coastal water is salty. They are the rivers that flow into the seas and oceans bring in salty water, and they don't have outlets. Welcome back from the commercial break. Uh, we are done with looking at mangrove vegetation, so we are going to look at Mediterranean. We promise to look at all of these vegetation zones, look at each, and they are taking our time, but I'm sure we are benefiting so much. There's no need for us to keep moving, whereas some people are not understanding some content and missing out some content. So let us go ahead and look at uh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean vegetation. Many people were challenged with the spelling of Mediterranean. We are going to Mediterranean vegetation. We are going to spell together. Let us spell together the word Mediterranean. M E D I T E R R A N E A N. Mediterranean, Mediterranean. So, uh, if you want to remember how to write the spelling of the word Mediterranean, you can break it down into three in your heart, but don't break it down when you're writing it. So, Mediterranean, Mediterranean, and the word will come. I saw it when we were beginning to look at Mediterranean vegetation, most people were challenged by the spelling of the word Mediterranean. And when we come back on our map, we, we already talked about this. We have Mediterranean vegetation in the northwest of Africa and the southwest of Africa. And this question came in the period last year. Our candidates of last year were asked to shed Mediterranean, were asked to shed Mediterranean climate on our map. But really, it was one of those tough numbers. Most people were challenged. Some others could shade even beyond this and come here and we could cross. Some others who could shade even the, the largest part of the southern part of Africa, we could cross. So you have to be keen and really know the location of each vegetation zone. So uh, to begin with, we are going to look at, uh, I've talked about the location. Okay, we can have a question. Uh, name any one area in Africa with Mediterranean vegetation. Name any one area in Africa 
Nemu in one area in Africa with Mediterranean. Name one area in Africa with Mediterranean vegetation. Yes, Monday. Monday in Magamaga. Uh, I'm uh, really happy that you're following. Terrace Dancer is saying northwest of Africa. Northwest. Northwest of Africa. Yes, Ivan. You're saying southwest. Southwest. Africa. And we said in the beginning that Mediterranean vegetation is found outside the tropics. When we say the tropics, we mean is found outside the tropics. And by saying outside the tropics, we mean if this is the globe, that's the equator. This is 0 degrees, 23 one can say 0.5, one can say and a half degrees north. This is 23, one can say and a half, one can say 0.5 degrees south. This is the Tropic of Cancer. This is the Tropic of Capricorn. If you want to go ahead, we have the uh, Arctic Circle, which is 66 and a half degrees north. And down here we have the Antarctic Circle, which is 66 and a half degrees south. But by saying in between the tropics, we mean the area in between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. So when we say uh, Mediterranean vegetation is found outside the tropics, we mean the region which is uh, outside the tropical region. This is the tropical region because we said this is the Tropic of Cancer. It's the Tropic of Capricorn. So outside of this we have it. Like when you come to our map, already the, we have the, uh, the Tropic of Cancer there and the Tropic of Capricorn there. So it is found here and found here. So it's found outside the tropics. We have said that and everyone is aware of that. Another one, we said uh, mangrove vegetation, I mean Mediterranean vegetation, is a source of softwood timber. Why? It grows in areas of low temperature. In the beginning, we said uh, different types of natural vegetation have, some others have hardwood timber, some others have softwood timber. Why? Those that grow in areas of high temperature, they have hardwood timber. Those that grow in areas of low temperature, like Mediterranean, mountain vegetation, and temperate vegetation, those ones are sources of softwood timber. Then those that grow in areas of high temperature, like the savanna and the equatorial, they are sources of hardwood timber. So, can go ahead and talk about characteristics of characteristics of or you can first have NB, you can have our NB and say mangrove vegetation, I mean Mediterranean vegetation is found outside the tropics. Mediterranean. Mediterranean vegetation. Mediterranean vegetation is found out found outside the tropics. Then you can go ahead and say characteristics of Mediterranean vegetation. Characteristics of Mediterranean vegetation. Characteristics of Mediterranean vegetation. Yes, James, tell us the answer. Characteris characteristics of Mediterranean vegetation. Yes, James. And James is saying the vegetation is a source of softwood timber. So we are saying it is a source of soft wood. Timber. 
is a source of softwood timber. We gave a reason why it grows in areas of low temperature. Another one, yes, Chigonya, tell us the answer. Chigonya is saying the, the, the roots are widely spread. The roots are widely spread. When we say the roots are widely spread, that is if this is the underground and this is the plant, in order to get water from underground, that's why the, 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 the roots are widely what? Spread in order to tap water underground. Now how we can go ahead? Any other? Coming back to you, tell us some of the characteristics of uh, Mediterranean. You can talk about the, 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 the leaves are hairy. The leaves are hairy. What do we mean by that? If this is a leaf, by saying hairy, we mean uh, when you look at the, the leaves, they have some of the particles. Like when you look at the human, the human skin, this is the hair. So even the leaves from Mediterranean, they have that kind of hair. That's why we are saying the leaves are hairy. That is in order to reduce the rate of transpiration. Uh, those are the characteristics of Mediterranean vegetation we have looked at as per now. So let us have our activity. And I'm happy uh, many of you are submitting work. I was happy when I saw Kuikiriza. Uh, Justin from Kampala Parents, you submitted your work. Uh, we received it and I'm happy. We also received work from Mbowa, Elijah from P7K. We got your work. Many of you, you keep encouraging your friends also and in their work. We are going to have our activity here. I'm putting it here. We are having our activity. Attempt it and hand in your work. There is a number on the screen. Don't call. Record a video and send. For those who missed the first lessons, go on YouTube. Type. Learn at home. Then you receive those lessons you missed. This is the way to go. We don't know when schools will be opened by the government, but have nothing to do. All in all, we have to keep learning. This is the activity I've given you. Let us go through it. Number one, how does terracing control soil erosion? Number two, give two problems faced by people who live around mountainous areas. Number three, why is mangrove vegetation good for boat making? Why does, number four, why does mangrove vegetation grow along the coast? Number five, how can the problem of poor transport be solved in mountainous areas? So attempt it, that's what it is. I'll be really grateful to see that most of you are submitting your work from all over the country. There are those who are submitting from Mitoma, Butaleja, Entebbe, Mukono. Really, we are all are there to answer and look through your work. Don't call. Just, just take screenshots of your work or record yourself in a video and send your work. Thank you for being a good viewers. Stay tuned. I remain Babinga Moses. To participate, send a short WhatsApp video of yourself asking the teacher a question about the topic to 0705